Hello, I'm Dr. Godfrey Baumgard and I'd like to welcome you to the St. Paul's Hospital Maternity Services Programme. We are a family-centred facility where approximately 1,800 women from around the Lower Mainland choose to deliver their babies each year. Guided by the principle how you want to be treated, we provide comprehensive maternity and neonatal services for both low-risk and high-risk mothers-to-be and newborns. We'd like to show you our maternity centre and tell you a little bit about what to expect. This tour is interactive, meaning that you can fast forward through parts or pull the cursor to your desired point in the tour. You've likely already spent a significant amount of time with your caregiver, your midwife, physician or obstetrician. At Simple's Hospital, all of these providers deliver babies and work closely with the nursing staff to help bring your baby into the world and care for you and your baby after birth. We also work with a great team of paediatricians that may also see your baby after birth. Let's chat a little bit about when you get to the hospital. As you know, St. Paul's Hospital is located downtown on Barrard Street. When you arrive at the hospital, you can come directly to the maternity centre, located on the third floor of the Providence Building. Please note that parking is sometimes difficult, and there isn't always parking available underground. It would be wise to plan ahead for parking, and know that alternative parking is available at the Sheraton Wall Centre across the street, or there is a parkade located beside the hospital on Comox Street. You may be thinking, how do I know when to come to the hospital? This is something that you will discuss in great detail with your care provider, but some reasons to come to the hospital are as follows. Your water breaks. There is blood coming from your vagina. There is green or brown liquid coming from your vagina. You cannot feel your baby move. You feel generally unwell, have blurred vision, or an unusual headache. If you are past your due date and your water breaks, many care providers suggest simply calling them to discuss the fact that your water has broken. The care provider will ask, is the fluid clear? They will ask if you can feel your baby moving. We also ask you to call the maternity centre at 604-682-2344, extension 62432, to let us know. We may advise you to stay at home or we may ask you to come in. Of course, when in doubt, or if you have any concerns, come to the hospital for assessment. Some women have a normal bacterium that is present in their vagina called Group B Streptococcus, GBS. For women who are confirmed GBS positive, you will be advised to come to the hospital when your water breaks to commence antibiotic treatment. For this, an intravenous line will be inserted into your arm and the antibiotics will be administered into your IV. Each dose only takes 20 minutes and you will likely receive the dose every 4 hours. Of course, you may also be having labour pain. When your body starts to go into labour, you will likely experience contraction pain. We suggest you come to the hospital when the contractions are regular. They are painful and they are hard to talk through. If this is your first baby, this means that contraction pain is occurring every three to four minutes. It's lasting about a minute long. The contractions are occurring regularly and have been for at least one to two hours. You cannot talk through the contractions. If this, is your, if this is your second or third baby, or more, this means the contraction pain is occurring every 5 to 10 minutes. You have an urge to push if your water breaks. In some cases, you may need to call an ambulance. Examples of such cases are if there is a large amount of heavy bright red bleeding coming from your vagina, or you feel a cord or foot in your vagina. Also, if you are short of breath and or have a very bad headache that is abnormal for you. When you get to the maternity centre, you will be registered at the front desk by a member of our team. We ask that you bring care card, picture ID, antenatal records. If you are a non-resident of BC or do not have insurance under the Medical Services Plan of BC, you may wish to contact our finance department in advance at 604-806-8002 to discuss financial matters. If you do not have insurance, you will be presented with a bill for services. Examples of billable items include the hospital stay per day, the delivery and cost for analgesics such as an epidural. If special consultants are required, these are also billable services. If your baby is admitted into our nursery for observation and treatment, you will also be billed for care. Of course you aren't charged for anything if you are insured under BC MSP. 
After you are registered, you may be placed in this area of the unit called the assessment room. This room is simply a room with two beds where the care team can assess you and your baby. This may mean we check to see how far dilated your cervix is. We may also listen to the baby's heartbeat and assess whether or not your water has broken. From this room, sometimes patients are sent home and sometimes patients are admitted. You may be sent home if you are in very early labour or your reason for coming to the hospital was resolved. Once you are admitted to a room, you will notice that almost all of our rooms are single rooms. We call this single room maternity care. We only have one room that is a shared room. This room is used for patients who may require a longer term stay in the hospital before their baby is born. Otherwise, you and your partner and whomever else you desire to be present will labour in a room by yourself. Doulas are welcome. As you can see, each room is quite large. There is a special birthing bed that moves in all kinds of directions to help support you while you labour and give birth. Most of our rooms have great, beautiful windows for natural light. You will also have your own bathroom. Each room has all the necessary equipment to deliver your baby. There is also some emergency equipment that is required for all births for safety measures. Some of this equipment includes delivery cart with instruments such as clamps to clamp the umbilical cord and scissors to cut the cord. A stabilette is present at all births. A stabilette is a specialised piece of equipment that enables us to administer oxygen to your baby and provide warmth. Ideally, however, the baby will be born and brought right to you. In some circumstances, babies need a little bit of stimulation to remember to breathe, and we do this by giving them oxygen. Remember, they are transitioning from being a water-breathing creature to an air-breathing one in an instant. There is also a phone in each room for use at your convenience. Only local calls are permitted. Each room also has a jacuzzi tub and shower. Many women like to spend a part of their labour in the tub or shower. Many find the warm water soothing during contractions. We encourage your partner to bring his or her bathing suit to support you in the shower or tub. While you are in active labour, a nurse will be assigned to care for you and provide labour support. The nurse will be monitoring your baby's heart rate using a portable Doppler or a fetal monitor. Our monitors feed into the nursing station, so there is always someone watching your baby's heartbeat. The nurse will also be taking your blood pressure. The laboratory may collect some blood work. You may have an IV started. The care team will also check your cervix by performing a vaginal examination. The nurse is there to support you during your labour. To help you cope during your labour, some things that many women find helpful include being in the shower, the warm water on your back or tummy can be soothing, bath, massage, walking, acupuncture, visualisation or focal point. Many people have questions about pharmacological pain relief options during their labour. Some women choose to use Entonox or laughing gas. You breathe this during the contraction and many state that it takes the edge off the contraction. Your nurse will help coach you if you decide to use the laughing gas. In early labour, narcotics can be used such as morphine. We don't use morphine when you are close to delivering as the medication sometimes makes the baby a little sleepy. We can also use another narcotic called fentanyl to help take the pain away. We often use fentanyl when you are close to delivering the baby for immediate relief and it is administered into your intravenous. Please speak to your care provider and or your nurse about the benefits and risks associated with analgesia. Of course you may desire to have an epidural. An epidural is a form of regional anesthesia involving injection of drugs through a catheter placed into the epidural space. The injection can cause both a loss of sensation and loss of pain by blocking the transmission of signals through nerves in or near the spinal cord. An anesthesiologist is required to insert an epidural and your care provider, doctor or midwife needs to prescribe one for you. If you decide that you would like an epidural, the entire procedure from start to pain relief will take about 30 minutes. Sometimes the anesthesiologist may be tied up in the operating room. In this case, there can be a short wait to receive an epidural. The risks and benefits of an epidural will be explained to you by the care team. You may wish to discuss these with your care provider prior to your labour experience. Some individuals will be having a buck caesarean section. For these individuals, you will be directed to make an appointment in our fetal monitoring clinic prior to your OR date. You will have blood work drawn and we will listen to your baby's heartbeat. We ask you to arrive to the hospital at 0630 hours and check into the surgical daycare area. 
we will prepare you for surgery. Only one person will be allowed to attend the birth of your baby if you are having a caesarean section. This person is usually your partner. We don't have an issue of visiting hours in the maternity unit. We support family-centered care. However, we do encourage you to limit your visitors so that you can get some much needed rest and spend time breastfeeding your baby. It is a very exciting time, but you will be very busy when you go home. So rest in these early days is essential. Remember that babies in the first few days of life need to feed frequently and you are just learning how to breastfeed. Children are not permitted to stay overnight in the hospital. Only one support person may stay overnight. This may be your partner or your mother, mother-in-law or friend, for example. Children must be supervised at all times when they are in the maternity centre. Before we talk about what to bring to the hospital and your stay during your postpartum period, there may be one more reason you come to the maternity centre. This reason will be to visit our clinic. You may be asked to make an appointment in the clinic by your primary health care provider for fetal monitoring, blood pressure monitoring, special assessment and or ultrasound. You may be wondering what should I bring to the hospital? We suggest that you bring the following items. You will be supplied with one package of sanitary napkins as you will experience a period-like flow after the birth. You may wish to bring a package of extra pads for your comfort or if you run out of the complimentary ones. Chapstick, snacks, hair elastics, brush, pillows, PJs if you prefer not to wear the hospital gown, toiletries such as a toothbrush, camera, batteries, charger, water bottles. We have an ice machine and a water dispenser on the unit. You may wish to bring a comfortable blanket from home for your partner to use. Food for your partner. Meals are provided three times a day for mum. Slippers and flip-flops. We don't encourage bare feet in the hospital iPod dock for music. You may really enjoy having music during your birth experience. After the birth of your baby, we will help teach you about breastfeeding and caring for your baby. There are whiteboards in each patient room that you can use to write questions down and that the nurse will use as well to aid in your teaching. Some items that we will review, in addition to items that need to be completed prior to your discharge include learning how to latch your baby onto the breast to breastfeed. We will teach you about how many times your baby should pee and poo and about changing diapers. Your newborn baby will have a quick blood test that is called newborn screening that tests your baby for a number of conditions that are treatable if detected early. The BC Hearing Program will conduct a hearing check on your new baby. Your paediatrician and or physician and midwife will thoroughly examine your baby. We will teach you about soothing techniques for when your baby is crying. We will teach you about normal newborn behaviour. We will encourage you and your partner to practice skin-to-skin -skin whenever possible. Skin-to-skin -skin contact between mother and baby at birth reduces crying, improves mother-baby interaction, keeps the baby warmer and helps women breastfeed successfully. We also encourage you to review a copy of Baby's Best Chance. You can download a copy at www.bestchance.gov.bc.ca. We will also help aid in troubleshooting breastfeeding issues such as if you've had previous breast surgery or have flat nipples. When you are ready to go home, we suggest that you bring the following to the hospital for preparing to leave. A hat for your baby for going home. Baby diaper shirts. Diapers. You will be supplied with diapers during your stay, but remember that you will need either your own cloth diaper or a disposable diaper for your baby when you go home. Please bring two receiving blankets for car seat preparation. Please bring the car seat and base with manuals. The nursing team will review car safety and perform a car seat check prior to you leaving the hospital. BC law requires that all drivers must ensure that all children in their vehicle are up to one year of age and up to nine kilograms, 20 pounds, use a rear-facing car seat. Rear-facing car seats support and protect the child's head and spine in the event of a frontal crash. All children must remain rear-facing until they are at least one year of age and 9 kilograms, 20 pounds. They may remain rear-facing until they have reached the upper weight limit for the rear-facing position of their car seat. Look for a label that says the rear-facing car seat complies with Canadian Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Never place a rear-facing car seat in the front passenger seat with an active airbag. 
death or serious injury can occur when airbags deploy and impact the rear-facing car seat. Give your baby frequent breaks from their infant seat. Take your baby out of the infant seat and put him or her in a stroller if you're going shopping or running errands, and stop regularly if you're on a longer road trip. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions and read your vehicle owner's manual. We will advise you when you will be going home. If you had a vaginal delivery, you will generally go home in one to two days. If you had a birth by caesarean section, you can expect to say two to three days. Your date and time of discharge will be communicated to you on the whiteboards in your room. On the day of discharge, the following things will happen. For mum, primary care provider sees you and assesses you for the last time. You will get a prescription if needed. The nursing team will go over final discharge teaching and plans. The community liaison nurse sees you in the hospital to discuss final arrangements for when you go home. And at this time, it may be arranged to have the public health nurse visit you in your home. Your primary care provider will advise you about following up with them in the community. For baby, we will take the baby's weight on the morning of discharge. The primary care provider and or paediatrician sees the baby and does a final assessment. Newborn blood screening is completed. BC hearing screen is completed. We hope you enjoy your stay at the Maternity Centre at St Paul's Hospital. It is a special time in your life and we are very happy to be part of it. We look forward to seeing you. For additional information, please download a copy of Having Your Baby at St Paul's Hospital from the address on the screen.